Andrea Zimmerman. It's fantastic to have you here. And we're all curious, why do you add creativity into your regular piano lessons? Yeah. Um, well, good to be here, Leela. Thank you for having me along. Um, I add creativity. I think that the uh, learning to play by note is extremely important. I think that learning to play by lead sheets is very important, um, especially uh, because I am a worship leader and I recognize the importance of having a lead sheet in front of you and being able to play chords. Um, I also feel that it is important for every musician to kind of find their own personal voice, mm -hmm. um, to just take ownership of their music and to be able to sit down and noodle on a piano and not feel like they have to have that, that piece of music in front of them. That's, that's a real gift that they can give to themselves and they can give to the world. They can go into an airport and they see a piano and they can just go in noodle. They can do, you know, whatever they want or at a friend's house or, um, you know, in the, in the room, the music room at school that they, that they have that freedom. So I would say a, a freedom in, in, in their musicality is really important. And it's something that I longed for when I was younger and that was not something that was in my training until way later and i had wonderful training but that was a missing component so i don't want my students to miss that there you go so you teach out of reaction to you how you have been taught which i do the same uh, now let's let's now go to the question of how do you fit this into your lessons because there are, you have so many priorities for your students how does creativity fit into your agenda um, creativity, I would say that it always fits somewhere into the lesson, whether it is um, using music clock, we do a lot of that to improvise, or sometimes I just, you know, sit down on, I said, scoot over and we sit down together and I'll just go on the black keys and say, like, you're going to sound great, just play some black keys and, and, um, and we do a lot of imp improv, uh, I would say, you know, in the, usually in the beginning or end of the lesson is where the improv comes in. Like, let's start off, especially if the kid walks in and they're just, they don't really have a lot of energy or you could tell they kind of had a rough day. Um, we just sit down and we play. We just let that release. Or at the end of the lesson, um, we'll just have a couple extra minutes and we'll just wrap up the lesson with just playing for fun. Like, let's take the mind out of it and let's mm -hmm. just have some fun actually just playing. Um, so we do a lot of, a lot of improv. So you're giving your students permission to play away from the page, which is uh, allows them to be comfortable in the idea of now writing down their ideas and making it into a composition. So tell us how you coached your students. You had a unit a while back that everyone in your studio composed, is that correct? Yeah, so, you know, there's always, we always do the spring recital and then there's like this lull because I take a couple months off in the summer in July and August. So we get down to the spring recital, it's still like six weeks left to go. And I thought, you know what, let's take that time and be really productive, you know, cause the, the, the spring sports comes in and, and everything starts to kind of wind down. And I just thought this would be really something to still keep the energy in the studio. We use what's in a name, and that was a jump start that you had created. Thank you very much. Um, I had been using jump starts uh, throughout uh, since you started them, and um, so my kids were already kind of in that mindset. But this one, I thought, okay, we're going to go all the way on this. So we are going to compose. We're going to scribble it. We're going to. It was a rondo form, so it was you know the A B A C A with a little bit of uh a ones in there um and it was a really nice framework because i always thought okay i want to teach my kids how to compose but i don't know where to begin like it's scary for me to even begin that process so of course it's going to be probably pretty scary for them too um so the what's in a name was really fun because right away it was let's pick a name and you know who's it going to be it can be anybody that you want it can be a sibling it can be yourself it can be a celebrity it, it, you know we had everywhere from garfield the cat to william shakespeare to taylor's uh, there was like five taylor swifts of course, <laughs> of course. Um, yeah. what was interesting was yes there were five taylor swifts but they were completely different compositions using the exact same name um to break it down because the name gave us the notes to use for our melody and uh, it was just a nice jumping off point 
And then from there, you know, some kids were like, I don't like where that goes. And I said, that's okay. Like we can switch this note. Like just because Taylor Swift are these specific notes doesn't mean that we have to stay on that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was nice to also have the kids understand that there's freedom in the composition. Like let's start here, but let's see where it goes. And how did you guide them from one section to the next? Did you have to give them ideas or did the ideas start churning in their minds once they got started? I would usually give them um, a couple, I would play some chord progressions. I like, I would give them one, two or three, which chord progression do you like? Okay. And then they'd be like, I like, I like progression B, great. So then we would go into what are these chords? And then I would say, okay, noodle with that. Mm -hmm. And I would purposely not hover over them. Mm -hmm. I would start, I would be writing down more things in their A section that they had already created um, just to allow them so they didn't feel like they're, you know, being scrutinized for hitting a wrong note or whatever. Um, and yeah, so I would give them uh, the chord progression and then kind of let them noodle, see what we would come up with. And I go, oh, that was really great. You know, and go from there. Yeah. And the, did most of them notate their piece in note flight then as well? Yes, I with the help of, of myself. Okay. Um, so we we, you know, chicken scratched it, mm -hmm. um, all the different the different ABs. And then um, and then we went into note flight and it was really, really fun because it was the note flight experience that made the kids eyes pop out and they were so excited and then you would hit the play button and they could hear their composition being played perfectly as they were still learning their own piece mm -hmm. and um and it was like the light bulb went off to yeah. see the music in sheet music form yes oh my gosh i'm actually a composer too and i had one kid go i'm gonna publish this and a little eight-year-old i'm publishing how am i gonna get money for this <laughs> like well buddy we got a ways to go <laughs> well and i think it's uh, you could give students a thousand theory worksheets, or you can have them notate a piece because did you notice that when you, maybe you were typing some things into note flight and then you would play it back and they, I've had this before, like, no, 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 that's not right. This needs to be here and here. And that's what I love about it is that they're hearing what needs to change. Yep. Absolutely. I would completely agree. So they were really taking ownership. They knew what they wanted to hear. Yeah. Oh, so nice. And then you went the extra step and had them create a cover. And did you use Canva for that as well? I did. Yes. Okay. Yep. They all got to make a, a cover. I also do a lab time. So during lab time, they, they made a cover in Canva. And then we also, um, we created the video. I took videos of, of every kid playing their piece. I put it unlisted into a U into YouTube. I created the QR code and then had it printed on very shiny, lovely paper um, from Office Max. And then we put it into like a little sleeve, a little um, like a plastic sleeve. So it was super pro. And uh, they had a they had kind of a cool gift on the way out. Right. And yeah. That they could huh. show their parents. So let's just step back. And now you felt comfortable taking them through all of those steps because you happen to be, well, I'm hoping it's because you were part of a composium a while ago. So tell me how the composium, uh, what gave you the confidence to do this with your students? Yeah, the composium was a game changer. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to do the composium to push myself into actually bringing this to my students. Um, I thought I need to do this first. I need to prove myself that I can actually do this um, and uh, under your tutelage and with the class. And um, it was it was important to see the process and to see what would come up mentally for me and the blocks that I had going forward, because then I could help my students through their their mental blocks of I can't do this or this sounds silly or things like that. Um, and then the other block for me was I don't know if I can learn another software in life. <laughs> like, I'm just so tired of softwares, but I was like, no, like this is going to be really good. You have to do it. And so I learned note flight and actually it was not, it, it was really user-friendly. And um, so I was able to put it all together and I went through the entire process with you and I was like, all right, great. I understand it. And now I can take it and move it forward to my students. And I'm wondering, during the composium process, there are other teachers or pianists along with you. Was there a time where you felt that uh, it was a little scary to share your work? Or how did you feel about that community and rubbing shoulders with other composers? 
Yes, absolutely. It was it was a little a little intimidating. There are some great composers that come through those classes um, uh, that have, I feel like, more theory background than me. But I also felt that the community was just so encouraging and, and they were so kind and they found the good in every single composition that came that came forward. And um, and everybody's got their own style and their own voice. And so you know, I'll celebrate my work just like I'll celebrate yours or any other composer because there's a place for all of it. Mm, so nice. Well, thank you, Andrea, for sharing your thoughts and your creativity. And wow, are your students lucky to have you. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you, Lelia. Lila, I appreciate it.